Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I am April Strom and I'm here to talk about today function composition. And function composition can actually be a quite tricky idea mathematically for all students no matter what level of algebra or calculus you might be in. So let's see if we can tackle that and declutter this idea. So I'm going to start with this sort of cloud diagram here. Um, the idea of composition is essentially that you are taking an input and nesting it into a function. And then you're turning right around and taking that function as an output and nesting it into another function. So you're really linking two processes together. So I can show that with this diagram of saying here, I've got a set of all inputs, maybe we'll call them X. And what I'm allowed to do is take them as inputs into another function, how about we call that g of x? So that's just one function process, but composition says we're gonna then take that and do this process again by taking all the stuff contained in this circle g of x and putting it as an input into a second function, how about we call that f? So if this starts with x, then we move to g of x, and then ultimately we have f of g of x and that's this notation here. Now you'll probably see this notation often for function composition. You will have f little circle g of x. And this little circle is an operation function, much like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. It's considered a fifth operation, means composition. And so this notation, well crazy as it seems, is actually just the same thing as writing f of g of x. And you have to keep in mind though, this g of x that's written inside here for this f function is in fact a whole nother function, but it's serving as an input into this other function called f. So let's see what this looks like in terms of some examples. So I'm gonna start with, how about f of x equals two x plus one? g of x equaling, let's throw in a negative, negative three x plus six. I've chosen on purpose two linear functions to show you this process of composition. So find here f of g of x, and notice I've chosen to write this composition notation in this form rather than this little circle composition form. And I've chosen that because I feel like this is a much more explanatory way of what's actually going on with the notation and what to do next. So this says, all right, we're gonna start with f of g of x, and I'm writing this in a different color so you can actually see this g of x is a whole nother function that I'm going to steal from my example here. So instead of writing g of x, since I know what g of x equals, let's input this function right in, negative three x plus six. So now we have that this is equal to f of, well, instead of g of x, we have negative three x plus six. So now we can very clearly see that in fact my new input as the function, negative three x plus six, is sitting right here. And what this tells me to do is take this function and put it into this f function itself as its new input. Okay, so if we do that, now you notice I'm gonna be very careful when I'm writing my notation. So I'm gonna rewrite the left side as I work on the right hand side. That's just the way I do it because I wanna make sure I communicate to the world that in fact, what I'm doing is in fact composition and the order in which I'm doing it in. So I have f of g of x again equals, in this case, again, this says, take this as an input into this function, f. Well, f of x is defined as two x plus one. And the idea is instead of all the x's that I have here in my function, I'm going to replace them with this input here, negative three x plus six. So here we go. We have two times, oh, not x, but instead this whole quantity plus the one. So I now have two times, the quantity I put in for x is negative three x plus six, and then I'm gonna add the one to it. So you can see right here very clearly that instead of writing an x, I'm writing this fancy new function itself, or new expression in this case, negative three x plus six. And from here, it's just a matter of doing the algebra and simplifying and collecting like terms and all those like terms and all those things. So we have f of g of x is equal to, go ahead and distribute. I have two times negative three x. So I end up with negative six x, two times a, a positive six, so add 12, and then plus one that's sitting down here. 
clean all of that up, I end up with f of my g of x is equal to negative 6x plus 12 plus 1, so plus 13. And there is my new function that I created by composing two different functions together and embedding one into the other. Now, important thing to point out here is the order in which you embed the two functions is important. So notice, based on this function, we read this notation, this function notation here, as inside out. So I started with my g of x and then worked my way out. So let's see what that looks like in a second example. Same two functions, f of x and g of x. I want to now find the reverse order, g of f of x. Okay. So here we go. I have my notation, g of f of x is equal to, um, I know that f of x is defined to be this function 2x plus 1, so I'm going to replace f of x with that 2x plus 1. So I now have g of 2x plus 1. Now what that does is that tells me take the 2x plus 1 as a new input and plug it into, substitute it into the function g. So if I do this, I have g of f of x is equal to, here's my function g of x. Again, it's defined as negative 3x plus 6. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute in this new function 2x plus 1. So when I do that, I end up with negative 3 times my 2x plus 1. But don't forget, I still have to add 6. So now I'm going to add 6 to that. And so now, again, my composition, my linking of those two functions is done. I just now have to do the algebra from here. So we clean this all up. I have g of f of x is equal to distribute just like I did before. I end up with a negative 6x. Distribute again, the three on, negative 3 onto the 1. So I have a negative 3. And don't forget your plus 6. And one more step, I have g of f of x is equal to negative 6x again. Negative 3 plus a 6 gives us a plus 3. And now we are done with that order. And here's what's cool to kind of point out. These look very similar, but check them out. This orientation of that composition, f of g of x, is not exactly the same function as g of f of x is. It looks similar. The interesting thing about both of those is they both turn out to also be linear functions. Not always the case, but when you're composing two linear functions together, that will happen. But of course, we can spice life up a little bit and always have different functions here. All right, so let's try a third example. So often we do this f of g of x and g of f of x, but you know what? Why couldn't we take one function and put it into itself? So that's defined here by this notation, g of g of x. Nobody says we couldn't do that, so let's try it. So I go back over here just to remind myself that g of x is defined again to be this negative 3x plus 6. So let's tackle that example here. I have now g of g of x is going to be equal to, over here again, g of x is negative 3x plus 6. So I have g of negative 3x plus 6. And just like before, what that notation tells us to do is we're simply going to take this negative 3x plus 6 as an input and insert it into the same function it came from. So I now take, go back to my negative 3x plus 6 and I say I'm going to substitute all x's again for something and that something is my new input of negative 3x plus 6. So I have g of g of x is equal to, here I have got negative 3x plus 6 being plugged, substituted in here for the x, so I have a negative 3 times a negative 3x plus 6, but then, put that here, but then I have still a plus 6 tacked on. So just by looking at this, you can see Overall, I have the whole function negative 3x plus 6, but the x has been replaced by the same thing, negative 3x plus 6. And again, from at this point, it's just the algebra that you've got to tackle. So I have g of g of x is equal to, distribute like we did before, negative 3 times another negative 3x gives us a positive 9x. 
negative 3 onto the 6 distributed there gives us a negative 18. And of course, I have my plus 6. Clean that up a little bit. I end up with g of g of x equaling 9x. And then I just have to tackle negative 18 plus 6, so negative 12. And again, we get a whole nother function, still linear, but a whole nother function than what we did before. So I hope this video sort of declutters all this idea about function composition, particularly using the algebra to do that. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about how to do function composition using tables of values.